Mafex has reissued two of its most popular figures, Venom and Carnage. But I feel like there's something else that comes with them beyond that of a parasitic alien symbiote. QC problems. You know me, I love me some Mafex. I'm a huge proponent of the company. I always often come to the defense of them when it comes to the comparisons between them and figure arts, Marvel Legends, McFarlane, any figure that kind of handles some kind of character within this scale, somewhere between the five and a half to six inch, maybe even seven inch in some cases. And the only company that has managed to give a Mafex a little bit of a run for its money would have to be Sentinel and that's only with the Spider-Verse figures. I feel like they are able to nail them just a little bit better. But that outside of them, Mafex has pretty much got a really good record. Except they now managed to plant a little bit of a seed of doubt in me when it came to these new symbiote reissues. Keyword on the reissue part. Enter Venom and Carnage, two symbiote characters that I've been wanting to include into my Mafex collection for quite some time. Except I feel like there's a little bit of a tax, a punishment so to speak, for having to wait until getting the reissues for these guys as opposed to pre-ordering the initial releases way back when and being a little late to the party because my impressions of these guys not necessarily in the fondest of lights, but I feel like it, that comes with an asterisk, and that asterisk is the key word, reissue. Let's start with everybody's favorite lethal protector, Venom. And quite honestly, he was probably the one that I was looking forward to getting the most out of Mafex, especially a very comics accurate version, because I gotta be honest, over the course of time, in terms of just strictly the symbiotes, Venom is the one that I was attracted to the most. I know that in my Spider-Man 2 essay I said that I wasn't a huge sympathizer of Venom, but that, I mean, I'm sorry, of Eddie Brock, but that's Eddie Brock. Venom is a whole another beast, quite, almost quite literally. And so to see that Mafex was reissuing their Mafex comics interpretation, I was like, all right, yes, I am most definitely on board of getting a second one, especially since I missed them the first time around. And for the most part, I would say that this is very much a chunky guy. They're definitely going for that comics accurate look where he's got the predominantly black, and I say mostly black, suit. Except once seeing him in person, and you can kind of get a hint of this from the publicity photos, but really seeing this Mafex in person, you can see that it's not a full-on black. They're doing something that I actually perceive to be a little clever with the color scheming itself where... It's mainly black, but there's like some shades of blue, turquoise, something very, very muted, where whenever you kind of move the figure about, and it kind of translates a little better on camera than I was really expecting, is that the black has this sheen to it, this semi-satin sheen that really kind of emulates the very symbiotic alien goo that is actually moving about on the skin. So I'm not going to say it look, looks legitimately like it's moving or it's animated or anything like that, but it does a good job of making the suit look and feel much more alien than it could have been if it was just like a straightforward black. Of course, you're going to have the white uh, iconic spider symbol there on the front and on the back. Once you kind of wrap it around the back, you can see that he did not skip back and ass day the glutes all of this is sculpted very beautifully some would argue a little too well as far as the cheeks and the lats this is definitely an area that he did not skip and def technically speaking eddie while he's not taking photos he does hit the gym quite hard so it looks like the symbiote adapted that a little bit more than other aspects about his personal life and it's almost like mafix made it a priority to really nail that sculpting so you can see right there that you got the gat cakes but on top of that you have the very exaggerated latimus dorsey which like i said at first it kind of bugged me but over time it kind of I, I warmed up to it especially since this is meant to be more so the comics accurate version of venom the thighs and the leg area for the most part is not so different except for when we get get around the shin area that's where I personally I don't know if maybe this is a subjective thing but there's just something about the way that the shins are sculpted especially as we kind of navigate down towards the cuff area of the ankle that it looks too much like pants and that's a little bit of a shame for a figure that's supposed to have this alien goo be super skin tight to the point where it pretty much creates another spider suit so to speak so 
it's around the leg area that it does kind of break the illusion for me personally. I feel like the sculpting around the leg area could have been done a little better because the thighs are immaculate. Once we get to the shins, it literally looks like he's wearing shin guards. And I feel like the actual molding or at least the scaling of the plastic could have been toned down just a couple of notches. But it's an oversight that I'm able to forgive a little bit easier knowing that they nailed the head sculpt. Just look at that classic Todd McFarlane inspired Venom face with the very exaggerated eyes still kind of anchoring towards the top in a very spawn like fashion and then of course the paint apps that are coming through for the rest of the suit are still nailed on the head and of course he's got the open mouth with the tongue being slightly teased on the inside. This is another huge nitpick that I really wish they would have taken advantage of. It's just, of course, to have the iconic tongue being swirling and kind of coming out of the mouth. I really would have appreciated some kind of secondary accessory because the actual etchings of the teeth is pretty nice. I just really wish that his tongue would have been coming out because that's a really welcome detail. It's a very signature staple for the character of Venom. So to see that he doesn't really have that, and sure, he didn't really have the tongue too much in the comics until later iterations but still it's iconic like it, people can't disassociate venom from the tongue give me the tongue deep inside <laughs> pause okay i'm getting way too sussy with these reviews but that's not to say that he didn't come with any extra head accessories at all he does come with a slightly clenched uh smiling head sculpt which is basically identical to this one except it's not open it's not teasing any of the tongue inside no red inside there whatsoever but he does come with an unmasked Eddie Brock sculpt that is actually really well etched out as far as the hair is concerned with the paint apps, the little divots and kind of individualized strands kind of spiked out towards the top into his flat top. And then, of course, the very angular and very roided out looking expression on his face that is very comic accurate, but also it, it's honestly warming up to me again. It, I'm not the biggest fan of Eddie Brock himself. I've always been a bigger fan of whenever Venom is not not really taking the Eddie Brock storyline, but to see that Eddie Brock was actually immortalized, so to speak, from Mafex in a very well done head sculpt here that you can swap out for the neck joint there so that it looks like the symbiote is kind of peeling back. It's actually a very welcome addition. And since we're on the subject of accessories, he does come with, of course, extra hands, as Mafex has always been known to go a little bit above and beyond, making sure that you have a variety of different gestures. By default, he comes with these semi-clenched hands, but of course, on the side, he's going to come with fisted hands, uh, kind of slightly gripping hands, slightly open, half-pinched with the index finger hands, and then these two sets of clawed hands with slightly pointy fingers to make it look like claws are starting to somewhat come out and they're both pretty much identical except the of course the only obvious difference is that one of them does in fact come with magnets imprinted inside so that you are able to technically speaking mount this guy up on some kind of magnetic surface to make it look like he's crawling likewise he comes with an extra set of shoes that are identical to the one that he's wearing except he's got magnets on the underside so it's pretty cool that Mafex decided to retain that even for their reissue and the funny thing is is that technically I'm not too surprised by now for Mafex to add in all of these additional hands, even feet, the magnetized ones, and even, the, of course, the alternate head sculpts. But what I was kind of surprised about were these web accessories, because even though we've had web accessories in the past, I personally have not seen any sort of like these. Maybe you guys have, maybe this is something that they've been doing for a while, but me personally, specifically, this is the first that I've ever had a Mafex Spidey character of some kind, even a symbiote, have these kind of web accessories because they came with these four strands, two of which have the bulbous ends to indicate that they are the shooting ones, and then the other ones are meant to be more like the uh, open-ended ones to make it look like he's swinging from them or holding them from afar or etc. But what really stands out to me is the very animated, very intricately made designs to the actual tendrils of the web that really kind of spiral into themselves. And at some points, it is a little bit of a tedious task to get them to wrap around the arms and kind of get them futzed and fidgeted quite well into either of the custom hands, the alternate hands that he comes being able to swap them out. But once you do that, 
it just does something to the figure to make it amplified even more as far as that animation. It almost makes it look like he just leaped right out of the comics. Specifically, like I said, the McFarlane comic books because he was the creator. So to have an awful lot of these webs to kind of wrap around and warp themselves around in a very animated, dynamic, fluid style is a treat. It's something that I just, like I said, I'm not so used to seeing. Specifically, like I said, these long ones. Not so much the bulbous, uh, shorter ones to make it look like he's shooting. Especially since you're so, you're so used to having these webs coming out of hands that are molded to look like this but of course with Venom he doesn't shoot like that he just kind of opens his hands webs automatically come out the only little nitpick that I have is that there's a part of me that kind of wishes that they would have gone with black webbing instead of just white even if it may be somewhat comic accurate depending on which uh, story arc you're really reading but me personally I had a preference because this is in fact Venom he is the symbiote I really would have preferred the black colored webbings but I digress, and like I mentioned before, looking past the color, once you get them to be wrapped around either of the hand accessories, then that's really where the magic happens, and you really do see how the the figure almost becomes kind of animated, especially when you're really counting on some of these alternate hands, head accessories, and web accessories to really make the figure come alive a little bit better, where the articulation can slightly falter, because... I don't know if it's just my unit, not just for Venom, but also for the other symbiote that I'm, uh, I'm about to momentarily tackle. But there's something uh, finicky about the joints and the articulation working with this figure that almost makes me scared that I might have gotten a knockoff by accident. Or maybe Mafex doesn't necessarily handle their reissues all too well from their preliminary releases. Like many Mafex that have come before, he's got two joints at the neck that allow the head to rotate 360 at the very top as well as at the bottom and even incline forwards and back very generously and even side to side. So it's very fluid but a little tougher than I would have expected from some other Mafexes that I've dealt even within this past year. So I was like, oh, okay, you know, that's kind of that's fine. It's once we get to the shoulders that it starts to get just a little worrisome. The rotation vertically, 360, is still there. And extension towards the sides is very generous. Once we get to the butterfly joint with this piece right here is where things get just a little tough, specifically on the right joint, as you can kind of see and feel there. Shifting up and down and having that shrugging motion can still be found. And it's not too bad, except for, like I said, a little bit of toughness around the right joint. At this point, I was thinking to myself, well, it's made Mainly just an isolated incident, can't really be too bad and can't complain too much. Then we have the biceps that are fully able to rotate on either arm 360 and two joints at the elbow that are fully able to bend upwards. The wrist joint can fully rotate the hand 360 in place, but moving it inwards and outwards is a little tough to the point where I get a little nervous of the stick or the peg itself getting a little frigid, getting a little delicate in there that I am kind of scared it will break at any second. But the movement can still be achieved there, albeit just with a little bit of squeaking. And then we get to the two torso joints right here with the mid-torso cut that allows a decent chunk of nudging from side to side, but not a full 360 rotation, only because of the way that it's molded. A little bit of shifting and crunching inwards and outwards, but not as much as I would have liked. I, I could technically toss that up to him being a bulky very beefy sort of physique but at the same time I still would have wished that a little bit more could have been done there however you can at least find a little bit of comfort in the waist joint that is able to pretty much crunch in every kind of direction 360 degrees but it can't really rotate all too much and kind of nudge a little bit once it comes into conflict a little bit with the diaper piece but definitely an awful lot of more fluid extension and crunching towards the back and towards the front so at least that could be found a little bit there it's once we get to the top leg joints that then my worries kind of come to fruition. You see, the left leg can definitely move up and down pretty generously until you get to the very GAT-worthy butt sculpt towards the back here. And as I do it a little bit, you can also see that the drop-down joint is still in full effect like much with other Mafexes. So it starts to extend downwards, and as such, you're technically able to extend the leg towards the sides but only so much. I feel like I've dealt with Mafexes before that are able to go a little bit more fluid and higher up with that leg extension. But at least when you kind of fit it into place, the drop down can definitely drop up, so to speak, or shrug up or kind of nudge up. Then the right joint is where I start to get a little scared because moving it towards the front, you see right there that it's 
not ratcheted, okay? The little bit of stepping that it's doing, it's not from any kind of ratcheted joints. It's not designed that way. This one was a bit more fluid. This one is actually starting to get stuck. Very similar to that of figure arts. That problem that I had with figure arts, a figure arts figures, where I had joints starting to get stuck because of the plastic. I don't know if it's maybe weather conditions. Don't get me wrong, weather has been almost a bipolar bitch here in Southern California with certain weeks being rather warm in the 70s and 80s and then the next week in the middle of goddamn April we have legitimate snow falling. Y yeah, here we just have a little bit of weird squeakiness that may have been due in part with, like I said, weather conditions, temperature, etc., whatever, but I never expected this to be a problem out of Mafex, but it's starting to come through a little bit there when I move the le the right leg specifically upwards like so, and then I try to extend it. Extending it, I almost feel like I can legitimately break the joint. That he only extends really about that far, almost a 45 degree angle as opposed to the f slightly further extension due to the drop down joint on the left one. So I was kind of disappointed to see that he's a little bit handicapped on the right joints on the right leg joint top right leg joint because I really want to count on some of these joints for any figure that is Spider-Man related whether it be Venom, Spider-Man, Scarlet Spider, etc. I feel like these joints are very pivotal to getting some really dynamic cool animated poses with a character like these. So, that's a little bit of a bummer and I thought to myself, well, that's just Venom, but it doesn't stop there. A little bit of a tease for our second figure. Anyways, the knee joints, however, are still pretty fluid for a Mafex. We got those two really comfortable knee joints that are fully able to bend all the way up. And then the ankle joint, despite the cuffing of the way that these shins are molded that I'm personally not a fan of, you can technically still bend the ankle downwards and upwards like so. Slightly rotated 360 degrees if you can kind of nudge the joint in there, but just be careful because that makes it very easy to slide the foot right off due to the functionality of being able to swap out the feet for the magnetized ones, but you technically are also able to pivot inwards and outwards, and there is a toe joint, but it's not necessarily the most fluid or poseable one that I could find on virtually any kind of figure, regardless of company. So that could have been done a little bit better with the pointy feet seized there, but outside of that, it gets the job done as far as articulation and to kind of save it or kind of meet it halfway is, again, the abundance of accessories you're dealing with here. To be able to customize them with the alternate Eddie Brock head sculpt or to give them the magnetized hands or the open clawed hands or the ones that are holding these much more dynamic animated webs that really come through clutch for the character of Venom here in Mafex form. And the sculpting itself is absolutely it really great. It's just really, really great, especially when you get them into a pose like this, a very intimidating one. But that's with a little bit of finagling and futzing you have to do with a case study such as mine, where you're dealing with one of the joints being a little too stagnant. I thought to myself, well, it's just one joint. You can definitely see that it's definitely an isolated problem due to the fact that the left one is fine, the right one is a little stuck. So maybe if I pop it off the joint, put some dish soap, some shock oil, like some of you guys have recommended in some past videos, thought to myself, all right, you know, maybe that could kind of come through as a savior for this figure and kind of make do for a Mafex uh, Venom that I've been longing to have in my collection for some time, and that way I don't really have to double dip in any sort of instance. But some of those fears started to get a little further developed when I kind of moved this guy out of the way and bring in the sadistic Carnage, a.k.a. Cletus Cassidy. I mean, when they were kind of decking out these new recent reissues, I knew I needed to get Carnage. Even though he was reissued by himself and Venom had to be reissued along with the Ben Riley uh, Spider-Man. But I digress. And... I knew that if I had to get one symbiote, I needed to get the much more, like I said, evil incarnate companion, which is going to be Carnage, for maximum Carnage, a.k.a. Separation Anxiety, a.k.a. <laughs> well, whatever you want to call it. But anyways, yeah, this guy is definitely the one that made me go, I really hope that there's not a trend happening with some of these Mafex reissues. I'm hoping that... I'm not kind of psychologically turned into having to pre-order day one when a brand new Mafex 
is revealed as opposed to maybe taking my chances and going, well, I'll wait for later. I'll wait for a reissue. I'll wait to purchase it later. Instead, you know, having to shove out a decent chunk of change, especially when some of it is kind of bringing in a return such as this because from the initial appearance of Carnage here, you could say that, yeah, this is definitively Carnage, black and red with a much more sadistic look to the symbiote head, and the overall portrayal of the character here is very top-notch, especially since you can actually feel the pattern that they went ahead with the symbiote here. You can actually feel the black upon the skin texture, upon the torso, and the sculpting is not as bulked out as Venom, which makes sense. Cletus is a much leaner, skinnier guy. And so you only have a few applications made by the symbiote as opposed to pectoral muscle, musculature that's happening around the thigh, leg, and back, uh, torso area, specifically the traps that he's got going on right there. But to me, the real standout as far as sculpting is concerned is, of course, the head with the paint apps, with the wide angle look to the, or the very broad look to the eyes, the fiendish smile right there with a little bit of pink kind of peering right through right there. And just overall, the paint applications is top notch. The only nitpick I would have is that sometimes, I know it's not the case, I know it's not, but if I had to nitpick, I would say that it does look like you can kind of look at a profile of the pattern like this, and it looks like they just kind of, you know, quote unquote, I'm using quotes here, in Photoshop, they just took this pattern and just mirrored it this way. And I know that that's not 100% the case. They probably took a couple of little ovals and splodges and kind of moved them about. For example, right here on the chest, you can definitely see that some of these little ovals and cutouts with the black right there are not exactly the same as they are over here. But at the same time, I kind of wish that they would have gone just a little extra crazy to make the symbiote look a little bit more alive on his suit. Like I said, it looks like right down the middle, they just kind of mirrored it and flipped it. So I wish that they would have done something just a little extra to the overall aesthetic of the suit. But still, nonetheless, they nailed the look of Carnage himself. Like, you see this right here and you go, yep, that's definitively Carnage. The paint apps are still there. The plastic quality is still there. And the overall look of the character is, in fact, still there. Save for the articulation, which is, again, where we get into some very scary territory. Because at one and I thought to myself, I got an isolated case with Venom's left leg, or I'm sorry, right leg. But then we're, we're dealing with Carnage here, and I made a very startling discovery that made me go, yo, are reissues getting the half-assed printing job over from Mafex? Because once you're able to get past the head joint, which is very similar to that of Venom's, you're able to rotate it at the top 360, as well as at the bottom, slightly left to right, and almost a full rotation, except it's a little differently sculpted here on Cletus Cassidy that it almost kind of stops a little beyond the 180 degree angle right there, so it can't do the full 360, but it feels like it would be possible if you were to say for example remove the neck joint even though it's not as advised here as it is with venom and you'll see that once we cover accessories but nevertheless both joints are able to really and fluidly tilt the head upwards and downwards like so almost a full uh, sense of direction right there and even some good tilting side to side especially since you kind of need that to happen for a very psychopathic character like carnage so that is awesome but you really need to hold on to that good feeling of very fluid articulation because when we get to the arms, it's where we get into our first major detriment. They're able to definitely extend towards the sides very fluidly, even above the 180 degree shoulder uh, angle, right about right there, beyond the shoulder line. And the actual pivoting of the butterfly joint can technically still be found inside with that piece that should Keywords should be able to move forwards and backwards, but you can see that it's a little bit on the stiff side, and that's because both shoulder joints are completely stuck on mine. Save for the ball joint that is allowing the extension that you saw before. I'm sorry, no, the hinge. The hinge that you actually have baked inside of the overall shoulder piece in and of itself is allowing it to fully extend towards the sides like so. That's completely unaffected. It's the joint that's actually on the inside part of the torso baked into this butterfly joint that has completely stagnated after just a few movements pulling this guy right out of the box. I was incredibly disappointed to see that it just happened to happen on both shoulders. It was one thing for it to have happened to Venom it's another for Carnage to now get both shoulders be completely 
paralyzed, for lack of a better term, because you could technically should be able to rotate the arms 360 vertically, but as I try to do, you hear that clicking. Again, just for future reference, no kind of ratchetiness is supposed to be found in there. That's the joint sticking to itself. And I know what some of you are already going to say. Get some liquid soap, get some shock oil, pop off the joint, put a dabble on it, and pop it back in, or at least wait for it to dry a little bit just to kind of smoothen out a little bit of the plastic. But I'm sorry, guys. I have to be that guy. For the amount of money that you're spending on some of these characters and some of these Mayfix figures, whether they are imported from Japan like I did, which... You know, sure, saved me a few 20 to 25 bucks, but the trade-off is that you have to wait like two or three weeks for them to come through customs, not get a proper tracking number, so you're kind of at the whim of USPS, only for it to finally arrive without any kind of announcement. Or should you buy them within a U.S. retailer like Entertainment Earth or Big Bad Toy Store? But, of course, with them, you're going to have to pay a little bit of a premium, a couple of 20 30 extra bucks. You're kind of nearing the $90 to $100 price point. And this is what you get right out of the box. Again, maybe there's a possibility that weather factors and temperature issues could be factored into this whole debacle. But still... I was expecting this to happen out of few hours because of the frequency that it was happening. It's another thing for it to now come out of Mayfix. Plus, the shit gets worse, guys, because even though I'm not able to move these top arm joints, once you move down, you technically have the bicep joint, which can fully rotate 360 on the left arm. On the right arm, you could definitely do that just very, very delicately because if you go just a little bit too far, this arm comes off super easily it's technically not broken because there's no kind of like residue or break off of the plastic and technically technically you have the peg right there but something was just made so off with the sculpting of this peg that when it pops in it kind of holds its own but it doesn't hold as well as it should like i feel it popping in right there slightly but i can barely futz with this bicep joint hell this arm overall that before I know it, this thing is coming apart. Like, say, for example, I move down to the elbow joints, the two elbow joints that are fully able to bend all the way up, and even the wrist joint that is able to allow the hand to fully rotate as well as incline inwards and outwards and is technically and favorably much better than that of the Venom joints that I was nitpicking a little bit earlier. But like I said, every time I... There it goes! Especially when I move it out towards the sides like so. It just slips off. The joint is so weak, and on top of that, you have a very stagnated stagnated top arm joint. You can imagine my disappointment when I pulled them out of the box and I was ready to go ham on him as far as posing, pause, as far as posing, as far as futzing and playing with it, getting him into some cool stances, very malevolent stances, and furthermore, getting into the accessories, which are a treat in and of themselves but let me go ahead and finish before i go off into that tangent the torso can still kind of nudge upwards and downwards as you see right there on the mid torso cut and can technically rotate the full 360 much better than that of venom because of the slimmer physique and can still kind of incline inwards and outwards and towards the sides on the obliques and the waist allows it to go even further in every kind of direction and can even fully yes actually rotate the full 360 as you can kind of see it right there and unlike venom the top leg joints are actually a little bit better can fully move towards the front and slightly towards the back before it comes to the conflict with the ass sculpt and then extension is much better not the best that i've seen on the mafex but can technically Almost hit the 180 degree angle right there before reverting back to its drop down position. All you have to do is just get it to kind of flush better with the diaper piece right about right there. No thigh swivel. Well, a little bit of thigh nudging from side to side based on that drop down joint. But then you get the two knee joints that are fully able to bend all the way up. The ankle joint very similar to that of Venom's. And because of the way that the shins are much better sculpted and slimmer than that of Venom's. It doesn't look like he's wearing some kind of shin guard or armorized pants of any kind so the molding on the leg area is much better than that of venoms and thus can allow the ankle to fully bend downwards upwards even rotate the full 360 no problem and even incline inwards and outwards and the toesies not much better than that of venoms but they can still be found a little bit right about right there but again 
an awful lot of this stuff with the legs. It, yeah, it's cool to see that he's got really good flexibility with the legs, but the arms are pretty much stuck in place unless I come up with some kind of solution that, again, resorts to using some kind of shock oil or dish soap of any kind. But again, for the amount of money that we're paying here, that should not be the case. I'm sorry. I have to be a defender of that ideal that if you're paying for a premium product, you should be getting a premium product with premium assembly and services. And Carnage here could have been a winner, especially since you take those accessories into account that I was just so ready to go ham on because they spared no expense with Carnage here to the point where you could almost make the argument, a very solid argument, that that's exactly what you're paying for as far as that premium price, not necessarily the figure itself. I mean, where do I even begin? You have, of course, the individual hand and feet accessories, very similar to that of Venom. He comes with the fisted hands. He comes with semi-open hands, open clawed hands. And then you have, like, these pinching hands it almost looks like he's pointing but at the same or maybe measuring something kind of looking you know taunting his victim so to speak <laughs> like he's about to do that and then of course some semi-clenched hands to make it look like he's holding on to something more on that a little bit later and then going back to those open hands you have a variant of those exact same pairs only this time like with venom you got the magnets embedded right into the palm of those hands likewise you have these alternate feet that have the magnets in them so you're able to to swap them out and make it look like Carnage is climbing up on a magnetized surface. So that's very awesome, very cool, and very fun that that's all included and very sharp because those clawed up hands actually have some kind of point, some kind of sharpness to them. And similar to that of Venom, he technically does come with tendrils of some kind, some kind of webbing. I, 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 I liken it more to tendrils because I feel like this is not so much web. It's much more malevolent than that. Technically, though, he only comes with three, two short ones and a long one. However, they're much more dynamic. They're color-coded, unlike Venom, which is white, and I would have preferred black. These are actually properly black and red. And you can see right there that they're very dynamic. They wrap around the forearms very well, except for the long one. The long one's a little difficult to kind of futz around the loops here towards the end. But once you get it in a rather cool-looking pose, you can see right there it does the job. And it's pretty cool that they toss that in. But that the, all that stuff right here pales in comparison with the other stuff that they also threw in. Naturally, you get alternate head sculpts. One of them is, of course, Cletus Cassidy himself. Very well done. Lifted from the comics with great paint apps. Sculpting. The hair could have been a little nicer because they kind of made it look like he's got streaks in there, but instead it just looks like he's got dust and kind of want to rub it off. But the actual face decal is really, really awesome. Then we get this open screaming carnage head, which... I kind of understand the point, I get the premise, but to me personally, there's something I feel is kind of wonky about having him have an open mouth, but you just kind of fill it in with this paint, this pink paint in the middle there. Very different than that of Venom, where he has an actual open mouth. And sure, I would have preferred the tongue to be sticking out, but at least you technically still have a tongue sculpted and molded inside. It's an actual crevice, whereas here... It's just a molded piece of plastic that is kind of extended and just painted over it. I don't know what it is, but there's something kind of tacky about that personally. And I would have preferred an actual mouth there. So, I don't know. I Again, I know that technically this is comic accurate, but seeing it rendered here in three dimensions, it just looks kind of wonky and weird and, like I said, kind of cheap. So... I got to be honest, between the two head sculpts, that's probably the least used one that I'm going to be using. I know, probably in the minority there. I prefer either Cletus Cassidy himself or just this neutral one right here to make him look a little bit more sadistic and methodical. But that's just me. Especially when you're going to be posing him with pretty much his assortment of weapons. This is honestly what was getting me giddy to play with him and made me even more disappointed to see how, for lack of a better term, f his joints on the top arms really work because an awful lot of these gadgets, well not gadgets, but these accessories, these weapons, so to speak, these symbiotic weapons are tailored to his arms, to his hands. He needs to be able to move them about. Basically, you get four spear hand accessories, two of which come from fists and then the others come from open hands. So you got a variety of poses and choices you got going on right there. 
Then you get, what, do we, what else do we have here? You have two of these Wolverine looking kind of cleaver claws coming out of his fists again. So it looks like he's got razor blades sticking out of there. Very, like I said, Wolverine like, especially right now since he's all the rage with X Men 97. And then you get one of my favorites, which is going to be this giant axe coming out of his right hand. So look at that. That is sick. I, I could not wait to pose him with this cleaver-looking axe. It's just amazing. And then we get a slightly quirky one, which is meant to be kind of like a mallet sticking out of his left hand. The only reason why I find it kind of quirky is because from a distance, it kind of looked like a thermos. <laughs> I thought while he's doing his killing, he does not skip out on his coffee because he needs to be energized. Cletus Cassidy with coffee. That's definitely a combination that you do not want to witness, but especially with him having the symbiote already. But technically, I know that this is meant to be more so like a hammer or a mallet, so to speak. And it's sticking out of the left hand, and still, it's very well sculpted and etched out. And even the sol solidity, solidity, solidity of the plastic within the hammer itself is actually really well done. It's just that, like I said, I want to be able to futz around with all these weapons, these clawed up hands, the magnetized ones, the different head. It all requires for him to be animated with these joints. And when Mayfix is now following in the footsteps, the awful footsteps of Figuarts and delivering on some of this plastic that can easily get stuck, especially with their reissues where they were giving so many collectors like myself hope that we can you know, finally get a second chance at getting some of these figures that we missed out on the first time only to be greeted with something like this. It doesn't really bode well. And that's coming from someone who's a huge defender of Mayfex. I would almost always side with Mayfex when it came to some kind of comparison versus a Marvel Legends, versus a Figure Arts, hell, maybe even in some cases versus a McFarlane, even though that Batman, that BBS Batman, that was definitely a lesson learned. But when it came to like the comics based stuff, the stuff that's supposed to be a little bit more animated, a little bit more outlandish, a little bit more cartoonish and that's saying that as a good thing obviously because it's supposed to be lifted from their comic book interpretations so you're supposed to have some kind of exaggerated features some kind of animation some kind of dynamic sense of scaling and proportioning that it's like okay it's a sandbox you're welcome to play around with it and i definitely get the vibe that they were doing that for this these iterations of venom when it came to uh, Venom with the web strands that as you can see right there It's doing wonders for making it look like it's actually swinging from that web strand And then when we get to Carnage You can definitely see that it was a smorgasbord of ideas and creativity happening with those accessories As far as the cleaver, the spikes, the knives, the clawed up hands So my answer is does Mafex still make great symbiote figures? Does Mafex really hit it out of the park when it comes to those comic accurate symbiote characters from spider-man my overall judgment and answer to that is going to be a resounding yes if you are able to track down the initial releases those first releases when they were first announced these reissues and i know it's going to be a little difficult to try to track down exactly proper evidence proper clues to tell you which one you're getting in the aftermarket whether you're finding it physically at a vendor in a collectible trade show or you're going on online retailers like Mercari, eBay, try to do your due diligence and figure out whether or not you're getting the reissue or the initial release because so far I feel like I've had more hits than misses with Mafex. Enough to say that yes, I still hold steadfast that Mafex really nails their figures in the scale as far as the quality as far as the articulation as far as the accessories and meeting and matching that price point but at least i, I can say that for those initial releases because up until this point every mafex that i've covered on this channel whether it be spider-man or batman related have been that initial release this is probably the only ones where I've tackled reissues because I know that these figures have been out there for quite some time, but most recently they did some kind of reissue that they released for either Japanese imported stores like Hobby Link, Plaza Japan, uh, Genki something, I can't remember, I'm blanking on the name right now, but so many overseas retailers. And then of course some of the ones within the US like Be About Toy Store and Entertainment Earth. And I feel like maybe something was kind of lost when it came to the manufacturing that the QC needs to be up the notch with this re with these reissues if they're going to be going back to the drawing board 
to give others a chance because I don't want people to lose out on hope that Mafex is one of the big players in the game when they're kind of half-assing it a little bit with their quality control as far as their reissues are concerned. So right now I'll say that probably the only thing that can kind of deter me to make me go yeah Mafex has fallen off or anything like this will be if I have one of my initial day one releases so not a reissue but a brand new release from Mafex that I do happen to have on pre-order it finally ships out it arrives and it comes with the exact same level of QC problems that I had to deal with carnage here as far as that bicep joint having the whole arm fall off the top joints getting stuck the leg on Venom getting stuck and I know what some of you are thinking why didn't you take care of that before filming this review because A I want to illustrate the point with these reissues and B I don't want to risk trying to fix the figure only to end up breaking it because I tried to pop up the joint and that completely destroys the entire figure and then I don't have anything for the A roll and the B roll so <laughs> that that's kind of one of the crosses I need to carry as a content creator but at the same time it's a one that has to be necessary in order to be able to deliver this message that the issues right now do have me a little bit on shaky footing but at least with their initial releases I would say they really have nailed it out of the park and I look forward to the other stuff that they have coming down the pipeline whether it be the Zack Snyder Justice League Batman figure the long rumored Toby and Andrew that they might be working on some other Tom stuff Tom Holland No Way Home stuff as well as of course some other comic accurate stuff that I'm looking forward to picking up for the time being though let me know what you guys think did you manage to miss out on the first batch of releases for the symbiote characters here Carnage and Venom and if you did did you happen to go through with a pre-order for the reissues and were you dealt with any kind of QC problems on your end or is this simply just bad luck on my part I'm looking forward to seeing what you guys have to say about this one and as always if you guys enjoyed this video hit the thumbs up if you thought it was a little too long again my apologies I tried to keep it as compact as possible but I needed to get this off my chest and if you didn't really vibe with that let me know by hitting the thumbs down and as always guys stay humble I'll see you later